Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. And another Carb Co. Quickie. So in this quickie, the question comes from James, and he wants to know, can we show the difference between the two ways you would make prismatic letters in Carb Co. Maker and Carb Co. Maker Plus? I can do that. We may have to break this into two videos. But prismatic letters, for those of you that don't know, are letters that are raised off of the surface and are beveled to a point. Now, I have issue with saying the word prismatic. It bothers me. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tongue twister for Mr. Hinkle here. So we're going to call them beveled letters from now on, or beveled text. How do we do that? Let's get started. Okay, beveled letters. First thing you need is some text, and I chose a simple word here. You, you may recognize that word. And we're going to raise those letters off of the surface. Now, I recommend choosing a text that's very uniform the, in, in shape because the bevels will react best if the letters, if the text is very uniform. By that I mean, you know, the risers are the same width as the verticals and the horizontals. That's in a whole other discussion. Let's get back to doing this. All right, so you need to create an area clearance that removes material around the text, all the way around it. Now that that area clearance can be made of it, made from any shape or any um, any size. And in this case, I'm just going to use the entire work area from the left corner, dragging out to the right. Create the square and close that out. Now, typically, I don't raise my letters any more than a quarter of an inch. So this area clearance will be at a quarter of an inch deep, and that's an important number that you need to remember when doing these letters. Whatever you decide this area clearance is, the depth anyway, that's a number we need to know to bevel the edges of these texts. So let's go to area clearance over here. We're going to start at zero. We're going to do a finish depth, like I said, of a quarter of an inch. We're going to add a tool. We're going to go with an eighth inch end mill in this case. <clears throat> pardon me we're going to switch from raster to offset we're going to change the safe z to 0.1 if it's not there already and we have a material thickness of one inch in this case that doesn't matter this is just a demonstration to show you how to do this calculate the tool paths and you can see that i missed a step so let me back up one step here we're going to shut off the um, tool paths and when you do this, you need to highlight not only the square, but also the text in the center. To do that, we push shift and we select the, the text as well, because both of those need to be active in order to create this area clearance and not destroy the text in the center. So we go to clear area clearance tool, start depth is zero, finish depth is 0.25. As I said, that's going to be the height, the finish height of our letters. We're going to grab a tool, be the eighth inch end mill. Scrolling down will change from raster to offset. We'll also change the machine safe height to 0.1 if it's not already there. And material thickness is 1. It really doesn't matter. In this case, this is just a demonstration. We'll click calculate. And as you can see when I close out this menu, we have the text. It's still there and everything else around it has been cleared. Now to bevel the text, go over here on the right, click on these light bulbs to shut off those tool paths, click off of the object because we want to deactivate everything, click on the letters themselves, and we're going to drop down to this area down here. We're going to click on tool paths once more, and we're going to select this icon right here, create bevel tool path. So we click on that, and again, this is how I do these things. There's other ways that may be easier, and other people might choose to do these differently, but this, this gives me a good result. This is how I do it. I'm going to give you the exact numbers, and that way you can put those numbers in and get the result that I'm getting. So right here in cut depth, we're going to do 0.06. Wall height, we're going to do the same thing, 0.06. Finish height, we're going to change from one inch now back to the quarter of an inch depth that we talked about earlier. We're going to scroll down, and in this case, I'm using a 90 degree V-bit. So we're going to grab one of those, select it. We need to create, I'm not sorry, we need to select a tool, profiling tool. We're going to go with that eighth inch again, end mill. We're going to select that. 
machine safety is the same, nothing else needs to change, and we're going to calculate. Now you're going to get this warning when that happens. It says, there's not enough height to complete the whole bevel. The bevel will be truncated. Do you wish to continue? Yes, I wish to continue. Push, yes. And as you can see, it's done some tool paths. Close out your menu. Now let's simulate the entire thing. Simulate all tool paths. And as you'll be able to see here, we now have the area clearance, which has removed all of the background. And we have the prismatic beveled letters on the top. And if I rotate to the side, you can see that they are definitely raised. They're definitely beveled. Now, you can see how wide that truncation is. I think that's a word. <laughs> you can see how wide that is truncated there, and it's narrower here. In order to fix that, what you'll do is go back to the beveled carving tool path, and you'll play with these two numbers in here. You'll change the start depth, you'll change wall height, vice versa, and continue to simulate until you get the effect that you're looking for. So that's how you do it with straight carve code. That's how you would raise letters and bevel the top surface. And again, you would play with these numbers, but that's how I do it. So I hope you got something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, we're going to do a follow-up video where I show how I would do this in Carve Code Maker Plus. To me, Carve Code Maker Plus is a whole lot easier doing it, but there's always a workaround. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. As always, give us a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll catch you on the next quickie.